The IFPI Global Music Report 2024 was recently published and woo, fam, we gotta talk about Africa, African music. Now, if you're wondering, what the heck is this IFPI thing? Well, the IFPI Global Music Report is an annual publication that provides comprehensive data and analysis on the state of the global music industry. And it's produced by the International Federation of Phonographic Industry, which is IFPI, and it represents the recording industry worldwide. The report includes financial data, uh, streaming analytics, market trends, rankings, regional insights, and general industry commentary. So anyone who's anyone in the music industry uh, uses it as a valuable resource. So think about uh, industry professionals, analysts, even labels when thinking about growth opportunities, expansion, etc. So in this video, I'm going to analyze where Africa sits in the global context when it comes to music. I'm going to look at Sub-Saharan Africa as a subset of the industry. I'm also going to dive into the African genres that were mentioned in this report. And I wonder if you can guess which African artist was given an artist spotlight in this report. And there's only one. Buckle up. This is the no BS version. First of all, let's look at African music in the global context. The absence of African artists from the top 10 list of the IFPI Global Artist Chart 2023, which is kind of like saying the top 10 artists of the world in 2023, suggests a disparity between the regional success of African music and its global recognition. It didn't surprise me that there wasn't a an African artist in the top 10 in this particular top 10 and really this indicates that while African music is popular and influential within the continent and within the African diaspora outside the continent, it has yet to achieve consistent top tier status on the global stage and our genres are not necessarily top 10 genres in the world yet. And this is really an opportunity for uh, broader recognition, if you think about it, because this gap signifies that African artists and the industry need to strategize to push for greater visibility and inroads into international markets. On the flip side, we did have a significant achievement in the global context. Rema's Calm Down, which he did with Selena Gomez, is considered the number two song in the world on the IFPI Global Singles Chart 2023. And this is a noteworthy accomplishment. Like, come on. It shows what Africa can do and Rema is a Nigerian powerhouse. Now, this success story serves as an indicator of the potential uh, for African music to compete and thrive in the global market. And what I really think is the key ingredient here points to the power of collaboration. Because Rema teamed up with Selena Gomez, what does that really mean? He opened up his music to an entirely different fan base. People that support and love Selena Gomez that would have never listened to Rema on their own were now listening to Rema because Selena Gomez was on the record. And for where we are currently at as Africa, this is a fantastic strategy where our artists can leverage the success of internationally recognized and acclaimed names to build their own profiles, even if they're huge to us. The second part of this report that I'm going to look at is Sub-Saharan Africa as a subset of the industry. And Sub-Saharan Africa outpaced all other regions with a staggering growth rate of 24.7%, which is the fastest globally. And that tells us that Africa is moving in the right direction, our music industry is growing, and our value chain is actually creating value. And this growth was primarily driven by um, a 24.5% increase in paid streaming revenues, highlighting our region's digital transformation. More people are paying the digital streaming platforms, DSPs, to access their favorite music. The most dominant market in Sub-Saharan Africa is South Africa, and it is the powerhouse of the region, accounting for 77% of Sub-Saharan Africa's music revenues. Take that in for a minute. South Africa accounts for 77% 
of Sub-Saharan Africa's music revenue. That is highly impressive and we can all learn from how they've monetized the industry and built it to create monetary value out of it. And to get to that figure of 77%, the South African music market itself grew by 19.9%, underlining its pivotal role in Sub-Saharan Africa's overall music industry's expansion. It's amazing. The third aspect of this report I wanted to discuss is the genre analysis. And Afrobeats has become a major cultural export for Africa, enhancing the continent's influence in the global music industry. Something really cool about it is the growing popularity of Afrobeats signifies a shift in global music trends towards more diverse and inclusive sounds. It's no longer just America like it used to be when some of us were growing up. Ama Piano was also mentioned and its ascent to global recognition marks the emergence of a new sound that is distinctly South African, yet universally appealing. This genre's success really underscores the global audience's appetite for fresh and innovative music styles, and the way Ama Piano infiltrated Africa even told us that Africa needed that as well. Now, as Ama Piano continues to gain international traction, it can drive further growth in Africa's music industry, and I think we're going to see the numbers continue to go up in terms of like Africa growing in revenue, fostering new talent, and actually encouraging investment in music production and distribution networks within the continent. So together, Afrobeats and Ama Piano are really pushing the continent far. Now, remember I told you there was a special African artist focus in this report where they wrote about this particular African artist. And it's none other than Congolese legend, Fali Pupa. And they started by mentioning that Fali Pupa's partnership with Electro Records Warner really signifies a strategic move to elevate his career on a global scale. And it, it made me realize like, this is kind of like the same thing with um, Maven Records being purchased by uh, UMG. Well invested into whatever you want to call it and these types of collaborations are really what's going to take a lot of african artists to the stratosphere and the importance of you know international label support in expanding those artists reach and everything else beyond regional boundaries and fali pupa has done it man what hasn't he done he is a legend a cult hero in um the drc and in a lot of uh, francophone uh, speaking countries and otherwise and I love that the IFPI team did an artist focus on him because he really embodies the potential for African artists to achieve international success. And his journey also illustrates how African talent, when paired with the right industry support, can make significant inroads into global markets. So it's a blueprint in some way, shape or form. And that concludes my analysis of the IFPI Global Music Report 2024. What do you think about it? What do you think about the highlights of African music, Ama Piano, Afro Beats, everything else? Where do you think Africa sits right now? And uh, what's 2024 going into 2025 looking like for African music? Share your thoughts with me in the comments below, please. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is M. Jeremoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Dende. Dende.